Russia's destruction of the Kakhovka Dam was an ecological disaster for Ukraine. But it may also turn out to be an unprecedented opportunity for the international scientific community. My name is Anya Korzun. I'm a journalist at Kiev Post. Subscribe to our channel for more updates, exclusive interviews and explainers. Today, we're going to speak with Anastasia Tsebuliak, a Ukrainian scientist in the field of economics, eco-activist and a founder of Glossary Eco Foundation. So the Kakhovka Dam in Kherson Oblast was destroyed almost four months ago now. What do we know already about the conse consequences of that disaster? Uh, well, the uh, former Kakhovka Reservoir, as we know, is a plain, part of which was, um, as usually, covered with plants, shrubs and grass, while another area was recently uh, planted with uh, clutter and alfalfa by the employees at the Kaminska Siege National Nature Park. Absolutely amazing pictures. I don't know, maybe you have seen it um, in the internet. But um, it is very important to note that these artificial plantations are very unlikely to survive the winter. And uh, we could really face in spring dust storms that could harm both the local population and the environment. Some areas will be resembling to the um, landscapes along the Dnipro River and um, to those um, coming along to the Liki Luk. Of course, new vegetation will appear, so new plants will appear, but this risk uh, with dry soils, with um, arid vegetation, with weathering will still persist in these areas. Um, I think that in the next 10 years, this territory will be evenly planted with the vegetation. Um, but um, in any case, so this will be completely new vegetation adapted to regional conditions um, that I think will really captivate the generations of Ukrainians to come. Um, but uh, the risk is that I don't think the um, environment and the landscape will fully recover to the pre-catastrophic level. So they will need time to regenerate over the many years. And uh, we will um, really enjoy some sustainable new ecosystem formations that will be adapted to the conditions. But in any case, this will be absolutely new ecosystems for the region. And are you expecting some kind of an exclusion zone to, to be created there at any point? or? Uh, because uh, so this territory will be evenly planted over the mm. many years uh, with uh, plants and vegetation, some forestation. I don't think there will be um, any exclusion zone or um, any, um, let's say, soil subsidence in this area. Um, I think over years we will witness um, new fauna for this region as like new insects, new snakes. But no, no exclusion zone in this area for sure because of plants, because of flora and fauna that will naturally appear and develop in this area. And what's happening to the specifically the fauna of that was there before the disaster? What happened to all those animals? Uh, so, um, as you know, they have been massively destroyed, unfortunately. So the area was really devastated. Um, it's a disaster. So it's really an env environmental crisis for this area. I think that <clears throat> we can really um rely on the local environmentalist and of course on the support of uh, global community on the support of uh, international community to really involve them in the restoration process here in ukraine uh, because um, we can really estimate that over time 
new flora, uh, new fauna will appear. But what is interesting that uh, due to environmental protection efforts, we can really restore the flora and fauna that once thrived here until the mid 20th century. Mm. So, in my opinion, so and due to, uh, let's say, those eco ecologists uh, from Ukraine uh, with whom I deal. So, there is, there is hope? Yes, there's, there is absolutely hope. So, let's say, the, uh, this territory will never, let's say, restore to its pre-catastrophic level. Let's be honest, this is impossible. Mm -hmm. But over years, this territory will regenerate uh, with uh, new vegetation, new landscapes, and new fauna. But uh, this will be um, new landscapes, new plants, new, uh, new fauna, and safe ecosystems. Really uh, beautiful landscapes that, um, that we will enjoy for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's really important in order for all these things to really happen in this area, in order to really, uh, let's say, restore, renew, regenerate the former bottom at the destroyed Kahovka Reservoir, we should um, really uh, encourage the uh, environmental discourse in the society. Mm -hmm. uh, we should engage in this discourse, the global community. That is why I really stress on the importance of the profession of ecologist. Because in order to be dealing with all these problems, we need at least like 1,000 of environmentalists of Ukrainian origin. I doubt that we have all these people here in place. I really doubt. That is why I really stress that we need to do everything we can to, to to find all the opportunities for environmentalists to be here present and really conduct research and apply all the efforts to mm -hmm. restore uh, the devastated areas mm -hmm. because for example in uh, 35 samples of the uh, let's say when we take the soil samples the background values of all these heavy metals that I told you before, uh, the background values, they are higher than the norm by, um, let's say, uh, 100 times. So these are just alarming, alarming increases in the uh, pollutants in the soils. I don't know, for the soil fertility to be really uh, possible to develop, uh, we need... Um, 10,000 years, just imagine, 10,000 years for the soil for fertility to develop. So mm -hmm. it's clear that all these territories will be not, uh, uh, we cannot use them for agricultural purposes for a minimum uh, of, uh, let's say, uh, 15 years, especially in the areas which faced heavy combat, especially in the Kharkiv region. So no agriculture. But these territories are huge, just the Kharkiv region. Mm. It's, um, it's, it's a disaster. It's, uh, mm. when, in, when, it, when it comes to data and you really start to, um, to see the data um, at the level of um, pollutants, which you already have, so it just makes you, um, it just leaves you without words. Uh, frankly speaking, mm -hmm. yeah, because um, um, all these levels, they are higher than the norm, fr from six to eight times, the background values are higher than the norm for 100 times, the soil fertility, so, and all these uh, pollutants, all these toxins are just ingested daily by humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, to really predict what uh, health diseases will develop, it's a very challenging issue because a lot of factors influence as, let's say, specific exposure, overall health, then uh, some individual susceptibility, geographic location. So just to list a few. 
that is why we will see only over time um let's say we'll be able to assess somehow um uh this problem and do you know if the impact actually you know nature doesn't know borders right yeah, so yeah. Is, is this impact on, on air and on pollution go outside of the borders on Ukraine, of Ukraine to other countries? <laughs> so in my opinion, for sure, in my opinion, because we have wind, uh, which just blows uh, depending uh, to, uh, to any direction. So it's difficult for us to assess because we don't have um, access to the neighbor countries. I don't want them to name deliberately. I, I do hope that uh, some research uh, is conducted in the countries such as Bulgaria, Turkey, because we know these countries will be affected the most. Moldova, which is uh, our neighbor country. Uh, we will see these uh, numbers to come, these figures. Uh, I think we can find them in, in the nearest. Um, and they will be alarming, I'm sure because I don't think that will be uh, some um, some differences from uh, those uh, data which we collect now in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So do you know if there is any research that's being conducted there? Is there any information available yet or? Um, not yet, not mm -hmm. yet, because you know, I'm also, um, let's say a scientist, which is why I really um, uh, want to rely on specific data don't want just to name and to frighten anybody that's not my uh, goal my goal is to really understand the pro uh, the problem that is why having the data in front of you you can assess it and you could really uh, envisage your plan what we can do in the nearest let's say for now what we can do in the next five uh, years time frame what we can do over 10 years um, and as I told you prior, just take, uh, we need really to take steps daily. And we can also, like, like usually Ukrainians, you know, uh, we can, for example, raise our own environmental awareness. Yeah, we can avoid littering natural and public spaces. We can apply efficient waste management. At home, we can also save water. We can engage into environmental initiatives. We can use um, public transport whenever possible. So these are like daily steps. Uh, everybody can choose what is more convenient for uh, for him or she. So mm -hmm. and for her, sorry. And um, um, really take small steps they can bring to um, big changes. And you know, it's it's for it's for scientists and for environmentalists. It's very interesting. For us, it's a disaster for Ukrainians, but for, um, let's say, international um, environmentalists, it's quite interesting to, uh, to do research, to conduct research, because as we already discussed with you, it's absolutely a new level of um, environmental problems. That is why. So I will take again the opportunity to invite um, those who are conducting research to join our um, Ukrainian environmentalists and together we can really um, regenerate, recover and ensure a resilient, um, let's say, health environment in Ukraine. Thank mm -hmm. you, Anya. So, yeah, I, I had um, a great pleasure to discuss with you this topic. Thank you. And Thank you. yeah, I mean, it's, I guess we can turn uh, a disaster into an opportunity to learn and Absolutely. grow as as a humanity. Yeah, and, and maybe my dream will come true. So the profession of ecologist will be as popular as I know as the diplomat now, as a profession of diplomats. <laughs> Thank yes, you. that would be wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you one, once again. I'm Anya Korzen. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like this video so more people can see it. And I'll see you next time.